Since the financial crisis a decade ago, securities market infrastructure has become increasingly important to both operational efficiency and risk management. Business leaders have had much to consider. There's pressure to meet regulations and international standards, whilst the availability of new technologies such as blockchain and application programming interfaces are presenting a world of possibilities to financial institutions. Well, to look at how chief executives are managing these challenges and prioritising investment, I'm delighted to say that we are joined by Peter Hyam, who's the deputy CEO of ASX. A very good day to you. Hello. I mean, let's take a look at CSDs. What are the key challenges? they face in the next two years or so? Well, I think you've mentioned some of them there. there it's, it's really about the, the pace of change in financial markets, uh, the needs of our customers in that environment. So when I think about our challenges, I think about the challenges of our, of our customers. So those are issues of regulation, issues of technological change, issues of competition that requires them to, to move faster than they've ever had to move before. So, so for us, it's a bit about keeping pace with that change for our customers. What would you say is your, your number one priority right now? Well, we might talk about that in a moment because it's a, it's a very specific project that is my, I, it takes up almost 100% of my time at the moment. But I, I would say our, our immediate priority is, uh, is around the resilience of our technology and ensuring that our customers get what they expect every day, which is that the systems work and that the, the market operates as normal. So before we can talk about how we evolve the market, we have to make sure that the market operates as, as, as the market expects it to. Mm, and obviously the market has to be protected as well because one of the big dangers right. are threats posed by cyber infractions. Now look, CSDs are responsible for their own security and at the same time, information sharing between them is key. So what is the strategy to ensure resilience and what can we do to actually increase collaboration around cyber because it affects everybody? Right. Well, I think that's right. And I think from our perspective, as, an, as a single organization, we can only do so much. And we, we do, as you can imagine, our board and our management team are incredibly focused around the issue of cybersecurity. But we're much more powerful when we operate and work together and collaborate. So from, when I think about from the ASX's perspective, you know, we, we work with our local uh, banks, we work with our government, um, and we, we work uh, very collaboratively uh, with the central bank in Australia. But also internationally, we work with organizations such as IOSCO and of course uh, with SWIFT as well around those sorts of initiatives. So when SWIFT um, created the, uh, the CSP program, we participated in that program. Uh, that was important from us because we, we saw that about setting standards around cybersecurity globally and us committing to meet to those standards. So we did that last year. We're going to refresh and re-attest again this year. Uh, I think it's important that as organizations across the world, we, we share our experiences of cybersecurity with one another. And that's always challenging unless you create an environment where your cybersecurity teams can share that information with one another safely. Perhaps unsurprisingly, everyone's talking about the disruptive power of new technology. But what are the new technologies that are making a difference for your organizations and why? Well, I think for us, the, the, the primary one would be, this, would be blockchain, or we, we describe it more as distributed ledger mm. technology. And the reason we describe it as that is it, is it sort of positions it as much about the technology and not about things like cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin or, or Ethereum. So for us, it's the, it's the power of that technology to help us distribute data and information uh, to our customers much more efficiently than we can today. Uh, and in doing so, solving problems that we can't solve today. Remember what I said at the beginning there about our customers and their challenges around competition, around regulation, around technology. Uh, you know, tell me a problem you can't solve if you are able to distribute data, perfect data to your customers in real time. If you can, if you can do that, there's an enorm enormous amount of innovation that you can then deliver to your customers on that Which basis. Which leads quite nicely to my next question because you've got CSDs implementing new technologies or services towards customers and staying safe. And really the conundrum at the heart of this, finding the right balance between innovating on the one hand and never failing because there is an expectation on the part of the customers. Absolutely. And, and in fact, one of the things that we like about distributed ledger technology is actually in, in many ways it, it improves the resilience of your infrastructure. By the very nature of a distributed platform, we can operate that in a, in a more resilient way than we can in a centralized um, infrastructure, but yeah, we're certainly very conscious of the need for us to, it's why I said my number one priority at the mm. beginning is to ensure that we operate seamlessly and faultlessly every day. Um, innovation obviously cannot come um, at the expense of, of, of resilience. It's the reason why our customers interact with us in the first place. So of course that's our primary, primary focus. 
in many respects, the eyes at the moment of the SMI world are on the ASX with your chess replacement mm. project. Uh, it will be the first CSD to launch the DLT-based platform into the market. Uh, how is the project progressing, and what benefits do you think it will bring to its participants? So we're now, we're now in year five of a, of a process of, of examining the technology and then deploying the, the new system. Um, and we are still, even today, 18 months from going live with that new system. But I am pleased to say that we're on schedule. Um, so we are now deploying the software into a customer development environment. So that allows our customers to start interacting with the new system. Um, that, commences, that commenced in August and, and is really completed in March of next year. Uh, we're then into the serious business of actually transition to the new system. And that's a very, very complex and careful process, again, for the reasons of resilience and, and integrity of transitioning from the old system to the new system. But the short story is we're on track and we expect to be live in around about March, April of 2021. Now, what that system enables our customers to do is, as I say, get access to the source of truth we have without the need to continually reconcile their systems to ours, which is the way in which systems stay in synchronization with one another today. So we think we're solving an issue of data synchronicity. We think once we do that, we allow our customers to build new services on top of that distributed data. We think that opens up a whole new era of innovation, cost reduction, new services that our customers can deliver to their customers. Mm, I'm, I'm really interested in finding out how ISO 20222 mm. fits into this because it is part of that traditional messaging. So in what way is it a key part of the solution and what are the benefits that you're expecting from that type of standardization? Well, the, the system we're replacing called Chess was implemented in the mid 90s. That was at a time where there weren't the message standards that we have today. So the, the, the message suite that was built around that system was complex and bespoke. And that system is the one that we're using today. So in Australia, when you interact with that system, you're using a, a set of messages that you're not familiar with using elsewhere. So when we implement ISO 20022 messaging, that allows our customers to reuse their technologies where they're interacting with systems elsewhere in the world using that same message format. It means the costs of interacting with our system are reduced. Um, and it's also about choice, because whilst we're providing this capability to distribute data, we're also ensuring that our customers can interact with the system on a message basis if they wish to, which is the traditional way of interacting with the system. That's Remembering an integrated though... Integrated system. Correct, correct. So you can actually interact with the system as if it were not distributed, or you can choose to take what is called a node, which is the source of truth data from us, and not need to use messaging. Mm. We think in reality most of our customers will, will choose both paths. Mm. For, for different for different pur purposes. How big a role is is collaboration uh, playing in getting things done at the moment? Do your two organisations work together? Well, I mean, collaboration for us, uh, by definition, when you're replacing a piece of key market infrastructure, you have to take an, an enormous number of stakeholders on the journey with you, whether that's regulators, whether it's your customers, whether it's the service providers of your customers. And when, you're, when you're, 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 your reputation is about resilience and integrity, you take those things very seriously because on Monday, on Friday, it's chess and on Monday, it's the new system and there can be no question that the market continues to operate. So collaborating with our customers, taking them on the journey, explaining what we're doing, taking them through the whole process of how we're going to transition, it's, uh, it's key for us. Now that's all about implementing the system. Then there's all about the innovation that you can now undertake because you've put that new system into place. And that's all about new providers of services that can now come to the platform and build services, because we're not going to be the uh, corner of the market in good ideas about how that type of infrastructure could deliver innovation. And, and that's about uh, collaborating with technology firms as much as it is about our customers. And I'm glad you've, you've mentioned the technology firms, because I want to find out how fintechs mm. fit into that. Do you see them as, as new partners, potential collaborators? Well, fintech in all its forms, I guess. We've, we've got some very large financial technology firms that interact with us today, and, and many of those are, are, are now building to the new system. But you're totally right. There are, there are new firms that are now springing up that, are, that have skills and capabilities to, uh, to solve particular problems. And we think that by providing a, a capability and an open infrastructure that on top of which fintech can write applications, we think this is a great opportunity for, uh, for innovation across the market. Mm. What would your advice be to the new CEO of Swift then? Uh, what should he focus on to support businesses like yours? I think you touched upon it at the beginning when you mentioned standardization. I think one of the, one of the key opportunities now is if you think about what we're doing in Australia, 
Now there are similar organizations in all parts of the world thinking about the same problems as we are, and then we have customers who are common across all of those infrastructures. Mm -hmm. So one of the key roles an international organization uh, like Swift can, can perform is help in the standardization of the actual processes that our customers need to use in individual markets. I'm now not talking just about the messaging, I'm actually talking mm. about the different processes. The full of, works. Exactly, <laughs> like trade allocation. How does that work? Can we standardize the way that that works across markets? I think that's a, an, an enormous opportunity. It's being done in other, in other uh, parts of the financial system, and I think, I think SWIFT can play a similar role in uh, particularly in equity and fixed income markets. Okay, good message. Sadly, we've got to end it there. Time goes against us. But Peter Heim, Deputy CEO of ASX, thank you so much for joining us on Cybos TV and have a great Cybos week. Thank you. Cheers. Brilliant.